Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath once again. My name is Edson Yakundi, and as usual, I'm taking you through the PowerPoint lesson. And this week, we are talking about God on trial. And before we start, let's humble ourselves and pray. Our dear Master, it's a wonderful time that we get to share your word. And today, as we are going to look deeply into your word, O oh Lord, help us as little children to understand your word and do accordingly. Be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God on trial. And today, our key text is going to come from the book of First Peter, chapter 5, verse 10. And I'm going to read it. The Bible records, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. So, the God of all grace has called you to glory in Christ. So, after having suffered a little while, so we get there is something called suffering and we must suffer a little while, but he will restore us and make us strong, firm, and steadfast. What an interesting uh, key verse today. And our point, a PowerPoint today is talking about we trust in God even when we suffer. We trust in God even when we suffer. And today we are going to look at one character in the Bible, who is found in the book of Job, chapter 1, all the way to the last chapter of Job. And today, we are going to look at the celestial council that was held in heaven. And there was a dispute, a celestial dispute between God and some other being. And this being is certain. So we go straight into Job chapter 1. We find a man named Job. In the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless, one, and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. This man, blame, he was blameless and upright. So we find that this man was God's favorite person on earth. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned several thousands of sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and a lot of many more things. God had blessed him abundantly. But what happened? It was time for the celestial council meeting with all God's heavenly subjects. Saturn, self-appointed prince of earth, came into the meeting. He also showed up in the meeting and uh, God asked him, where have you come from? He had to ans answer, I am from roaming throughout the earth, he replied. So God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is loyal and honest. He fears me and doesn't want to do anything evil. Hmm. It was a good approach. So you see that God was very much having faith in Job because he was an upright man and he was loyal to God. What did a certain answer to him? Does Job fear you for nothing? Saturn asked. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You blessed his work and so that his flocks have had to uh, have spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything that he has and he will denounce you. This is certain telling God. But what did God say? Because he had trust in Job, he told him, very well then, everything he has is in your power. But on the man himself, do not put a finger. That is Job chapter 1 verse 7 all the way to verse 12. So God gives certain permission to go and torment Job. And that is the very best thing that Satan likes. Satan likes to torment God's people. And by that, Satan didn't waste any time. He went back to earth and started planning things to do for Job. So what did he do? 
One day, Job was at home as usual. He was relaxing and thinking about how grateful God was to him and all that he had. Houses, land, livestock, good health, a good family. But suddenly, suddenly a messenger burst through the door and he started crying, Master, Master, I'm so sorry. I'm bringing you bad news. And what is this? A group of outsiders, the Siberians, attacked. They, stalk all, they stole all your livestock from the field and killed all your servants except me. I am the only one who remained to bring you the news. This was very heartbreaking. The Siberians had come, killed the servants, taken all the livestock, and this was very bad for Job. Even before finishing, Saying that, another servant came in running and he was like, Master, this is horrible. And what is it? Uh, he said, fire fell from the sky and all your sheep and servants were burned up. And I'm the only one who escaped. I only me to bring you the bad news. And now Job was devastated. He started wondering, what is happening to me? He started sweating all over. But again, a third messenger arrived and said, Master, the Chaldeans have stolen your car, have stolen your camels and have killed your servants. He exclaimed, only I have remained to bring you the bad news. So first, his livestock has been stolen. Fire has fallen from the sky and killed all his sheep and the servants and now the Chaldeans have killed his servants and stolen his camels. Again, as he had finished saying that, a fourth messenger arrived and Job was like, what now? And he said, Master, I have terrible news. What happened? The messenger said, weeping, all of your sons and daughters were having a party at their eldest son, at their eldest brother's house, and suddenly a big wind blew from the desert and hit the houses, and the walls collapsed into the, your, your children, and it killed everybody. Everybody died apart from me to bring you this sad news. And now, up to that moment, Job was confused. He was confused because everything he had, it was no more. So he had, he was quiet and then for a moment he was silent. What he did next was very amazing. He bowed his den uh, head down and tore his clothes and started praising God. And he said this, from my mother's womb, I came naked and I will return as I came. So God gives and it's God who takes and blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. This was a very good lesson to be learned because nobody, nobody can do that apart from a person who is relying on God's powers and Job was one of this person. He did not curse God. He did not feel bad for what had happened. He had all the riches and toil on earth. He had good children and everything. He had good health. But in a moment, everything was lost. And what did he do? He had to praise God because God is the one who gives and he's the one who takes. What do we learn? You see, Satan was not... Uh, Satan did not feel good for this. So he went back to God again and told him, this man has not cursed you because you have not touched his skin. So he asked for permission to go and torment him and his health. But even after being given the permission to torment him, Job did not do anything to uh, shun God or uh, curse God. And this is a wonderful lesson that we find in the Bible that despite every, anything, in spite of the trials that we face, we must not uh, veer from God. We, we must not curse God because it's God who sustains us. 
And that is the lesson of this week. Let's finish by, how, by a word of prayer. Dear Lord, you have taught us that in as much as we fa face trials and temptations, we should not curse your name because you are the sustainer and giver of everything. Guide us to understand this lesson. And O oh Lord, as little children, we ask you that you may be with us and teach us to understand everything. For we pray and trust in Jesus' name. Amen.